A second focal area is student discipline. For some teachers, mindfulness apps have worked both ways, hitting the mark in terms of behavior, but others have been a mixed fortune. Some teachers report that disruptive behaviors decline and positive social behaviors increase, and others state that these are not so evident in all students. The findings from these results are suggestive that mindfulness applications may be more appropriate as a student-specific intervention that is bolstered by other forms of interventions. Qualitatively in urban schools, teachers' training in mindfulness techniques was found to be associated with being more effective in the implementation of these practices in behavior management than other teachers without such training hence a higher level of success. Also, Teachers have highlighted the significance of continued professional development in order to initiate mindfulness applications. This is a way the teachers will be able to be trained on how to implement the mindfulness practices and what are the students' needs. Knowledge on mindfulness practices can help teachers to create positive and nurturing classroom climates partnered with collaboration of collaborative for academic, social and emotional learning CASEL, therefore, Teachers who are knowledgeable in mindfulness practices are placed in a position to help in developing. With interest in mindfulness applications incorporated into school environments, there have been several research studies investigating the effects of mindfulness on learners' well-being and academic performance Bamber and Schneider, 2020. This calls for the frontline implementers, that is teachers, to use these tools in an assessment of how effective these can be. In this regard these views are useful in providing insights into how such applications affect the classroom, student conduct and academic achievement. A quick survey with teachers indicates a generally positive view by teachers on the use of mindfulness applications. All of these tools, teachers say, help students become more familiar with how they are feeling and more able to deal with stress. Data cited by the organization American Psychological Association, ARPA, 2021 showed that 76% of teachers reported that their students' anxiety and stress decreased when engaging with mindfulness applications frequently. Not only does this reduce the stress in the classroom, it helps in the bettering of the overall climate of the classroom, but also it helps students to be better at doing tasks academically related. The purpose of putting together mindfulness applications concerns the enhancement of student mental health issues or academic stresses. This becomes important, as this research aims at the feasibility of such applications, not from the user's perspective, not from the technology perspective, but from the teacher's perspective, the ones in the classrooms using these applications. Teachers' perception is very crucial to perceive because these are the people that can see firsthand the daily impact of what goes on in these individuals' living, and these same people see moods and performances of these individuals at school. It also looks at the real-life concerns from classroom practice itself, 
including the time and instruction allocates and how learners behave in class. Through presenting the advantages and the problems encountered during the study, the research provided an overview, which might be useful towards making educational policy and improving practice. Such reasoning justifies reasons to give teachers sufficient as well as appropriate tools and training to apply while teaching mindfulness applications to promote an increasing positive stance of mutual learning amongst pupils. Notwithstanding the gains made by Finland, it should also be acknowledged that there are important differences between the UK and Finland's housing, population and public services landscape. In relation to the efforts of the Finnish government in increasing the availability, affordability and adequacy of Finland's social housing stock, social housing accounts for a significant proportion of Finland's total housing stock. This differs considerably from the housing landscape of the UK. After the Second World War, large-scale public investment massively increased the social housing sector, but the 1980s saw a large percentage of social housing being sold off to raise government funds in times of austerity. The right-to-buy scheme allowed social housing tenants to purchase their home at a heavily discounted price. And the profits raised by this scheme were not used in the replacement of the housing that was sold since then. Levels of the construction of social housing have decreased due to grants from the central government falling from 39% to 14% such differences between the UK's and Finland's social housing sector offers a challenge towards the implementation of the FHS into UK housing policy, as a much higher amount of social housing is needed to support people in the UK experiencing homelessness or housing precarity. In relation to the connection between people experiencing intersecting inequalities and experiencing homelessness and housing precarity, the background and the rationale for researching this topic provided in the introduction demonstrates that there is a correlation between women and BAME communities and the private rented accommodation, low-paying occupations, dependency on financial governmental support and high levels of invulnerability to homelessness and housing insecurity. The research presented in this dissertation highlighted that negative trends associated with the insecurity of the UK's housing landscape, such as declining levels of homeownership, dependency of a large proportion of low-income households on the UC system and the significant levels of residency in social and privately rented accommodation, is experienced disproportionately by women and BAME community members, in comparison to the majority population. When addressing how homelessness and housing insecurity have been politically and theoretically viewed in the past and in the current climate, the literature reviewed highlighted that in the past, there was a tendency to believe that homelessness was a result of poor life choices of dysfunctional or deviant individuals and this stigmatization is still present in the UK society.